Hello friends here is a new story. I hope you all like the video and subscribe to my channel. Now here is summary. When they were mortal they were in love. Now they are gods that are twins with a child. What will Artemis and Apollo do when the lines are not so simple anymore? Naruto will still be a Jinchuriki but will be raised by the twin archers in the PJO world not Kahona. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Chapter 3 Meeting the Godly Family Artemis and Apollo reappeared with Naruto in the Huntress's arms on the edge of Manhattan a few miles away from the Empire State Building. The Empire State Building was the current location from Mount Olympus due to the heart of fire moving with the gods. Wherever the Olympian gods were most worshipped the gods followed allow the Olympus. They were currently seated in the United States where the gods had both Greek and Roman child that no longer cross paths with each other. Artie why did you send us so far from Olympus? Apollo knowing full well Olympian gods could teleport directly into the mountain room any known location. Because I want to spend as much time with Naruto in my arms before the inevitable meeting. Artemis said softly as she gazed at the sleeping form of Naruto who slumbered peacefully in her arms. I think it would be best if you carried Naruto in your arms or a baby carriage first as father will freak out if I have a child in my arms. Artemis said with a smile as Apollo gave her a sad smile. Despite not even a day, which to an immortal passed by like a fly. Since Naruto's birth he could tell she sincerely did not want Naruto to leave her arms. They walked in silence as the mist covered their presence from mortal eyes preventing anyone from interrupting them on their walk. After a few minutes they saw the building come into view so Artemis reluctantly passed Naruto into Apollo's arms. Apollo quickly summoned another blanket to keep Naruto warm as he placed Naruto into a baby carrier with both gold and silver blankets covering his form. A and 2 Artemis walked ahead and a quick glare was more than enough to make the security guard to scurry off to another room. She never liked having a security guard to protect the elevator but her father liked things a certain way. Apollo walked into the empty room as Artemis snapped her fingers causing the elevator to appear and open allowing the godly twins to enter. Sunshine lollipops played when the elevator started going up till a frustrated snapped her finger making the music turn off instantly. Remember, keep calm. Do not attack anyone and to make sure Naruto's safety is first. Apollo murmured as Artemis raised an eyebrow. I am well aware what is at stake brother. Artemis noted with a sigh. I was talking to myself. Apollo said with a worried look as Artemis looked surprised but pleased at him admitting his flaws. He was always confident although not proud like her father or their other brother Ares. After a few minutes the elevator dinged as both of the gods left with Apollo holding the baby carrier in his left hand by his hip. Many minor gods and nymphs were walking around chatting but the instant Artemis and Apollo got into view they bowed on their knees. Luckily everyone was too busy bowing to take notice of the package in Apollo arms. Artemis briskly walked past all the reverence while Apollo gave a quick nod of acknowledgement as they entered the throne room where there were 12 thrones for each of the 12 Olympian gods. Apollo and Artemis calmly sat down in the massive thrones with the thrones rose up to match the heights of the other thrones despite their human shape not 30 feet tall height. Artemis and Apollo nodded before they each raised an arm and fired an arrow into the sky signaling a meeting for the Olympians. They looked across from each other as they waited for the council to assemble. The first to arrive with the stern and rule follower Athena who never arrived late to meetings. Athena is the Greek virgin goddess of wisdom, civilization, mathematics. Warfare, city defense, strategic, law and justice, crafts, the arts, and skill. She was most famous for being the virgin goddess of war. She was a very beautiful goddess who wore elegant white shilton with her black hair and gray eyes. Despite her status unlike Artemis and Hestia she conceived mortal children by simply willing them into existence by having the minds made of men she found intelligent enough. Athena raised an eyebrow at Artemis and Apollo human size but went to her throne without a word. She gave Artemis a warm smile that was returned and a quick nod to Apollo who nodded back. She got along well with Artemis as they both virgin goddesses and had similar morals. Apollo and Athena were on opposite sides of the Trojan War. Athena thought he was too laid back while Apollo thought she was a bit stuck up. Next to arrive to the meeting was the mighty god of the seas Poseidon. One of the original six Olympians and one of the big three inches. Poseidon is the Greek god of the sea, storms, earthquakes, droughts, floods and horses. He was wearing casual beachwear with his black hair and green eyes giving him a rough but handsome look. He did the common glare with Athena which was mutually returned before nodding at both Artemis and Apollo before going to his throne. 
he got along with all the Olympians to various degrees besides minor rivalries. This was attributed to his more laid-back personality in recent centuries although like the sea he could turn the tide in heartbeat and become your worst enemy. Next to arrive was the busy Hermes who had finally put Ho's phone down. Hermes is the Greek god of roads, messengers, commerce, travel, thieves, merchants, loads, athletes, and mail deliverers. Hermes was currently in the form of what mortals called a mailman with blonde hair and blue eyes. Hermes was one of the more laid-back gods along with Apollo so when he saw his best friend brother back he sent him a massive grin while Apollo gave a half-hearted grin back. Athena narrowed her eyes briefly at Apollo's behavior but put it in the back of her mind. Next to arrive was the goddess Demeter who is the Greek goddess of the harvest and agriculture, also the goddess and presiding over grains, the seasons, the fertility, sacred law, nourishment, bread and the earth. She was considered rather beautiful with long blonde hair and forest green eyes. She like Poseidon was an elder Olympian having been born directly from the titans Kronos and Rhea. She shrugged her shoulders as she chatted to herself about wheat when she sat down on her throne. This came a surprise to nobody as it was well known this goddess had an arguably unhealthy obsession with grain and wheat. Next to show up was Hephaestus who just sat down with a grumble with a few tools in his hands. Hephaestus is the Greek god of forges, fire, technology, craftsmen, sculptors, volcanoes, and blacksmiths. He was arguably the Olympian most pitied on Olympus as his mother for not meeting her expectation of an ideal son tossed him off Olympus crippling him forever. Despite more or less making peace with his mother his injury continued to plague him to this day. Apollo had on countless times tried to heal him but due to the extremity of the injury it would never heal just merely adapt around it. Even Artemis when she hated all males to various degrees grudgingly admitted that Hephaestus got the short of the stick for gods. Next to arrive were Aphrodite and Ares together who looked like they had a rather rough day of sex and hid no attempts to hide it. Ares even went as far to smirk in superiorly to his brother Hephaestus for sleeping with his wife which was ignored. Ares is the Greek god of war. His symbols include the boar, dog, wolf, spear, sword, and vulture. Ares currently looked like a common biker thug which was believed to ebb before Aphrodite currently enjoyed him as slash Ares was rather disliked by most of his fellow Olympians as he had an insatiable love of violence which made even his parents Hera and Zeus were of him. He self-proclaimed himself the most powerful Olympian besides Zeus. Despite him losing in a boxing match to Apollo, being bested in combat by Athena and arguably being inferior to strength to Hephaestus. He sent a somewhat lustful look at Athena who glared at him and Artemis whose look would set mortals ablaze in agony. Apollo could feel his fist clenching at the look sent to his sister technically lover wife. Ares only sat down when Poseidon coughed and waved his hand at the throne. A and 3. Aphrodite is the Greek goddess of beauty, love, lust, desire, sexuality, in pleasure. She was a unique goddess in the sense she manifested differently to each mortal or god set eyes on her. She would typically look like what the viewer saw as Perfection X100. She sent a superior look at Artemis who glared back at her in hate. Their domains were considered somewhat opposite with Artemis placing value of girls keeping their chastity and solidarity while Aphrodite placing value on loving freely and having sex whenever one pleases. Artemis thought Aphrodite was stuck up and shallow and Aphrodite thought Artemis was a spoiled brat. Aphrodite sent a wink at Apollo who she had a few affairs with and their flirty attitudes made them rather friendly with each other. Much to her and everyone else shock Apollo only briefly looked at her face before looking away completely. Nobody knew this but when he saw Aphrodite as much as he would deny it, he saw a mix of Artemis and Kashina staring back at him. The royal couple Hera and Zeus arrived appearing on the thrones like the queen and king they were. Zeus was the king of the gods and was the strongest Olympians with his brothers Hades and Poseidon being close in power but him still superior. Zeus was wearing a formal suit with his black hair and electric blue eyes giving off the royal feeling. Zeus is the Greek god of the sky, weather, air, lightning, kingship, honor, and justice. Zeus looked around the room as he saw that Artemis and Apollo had returned. He had a smile. He gave a brief smile to Apollo who nodded back while he gave a wide smile to Artemis who looked hesitantly at her father. It was well known he had a soft spot for Artemis and Athena over his sons. Hera is the Greek goddess of motherhood, marriage, familial love, and women. She was married to Zeus but despite her domain itself being marriage it did little to nothing from Zeus having countless affairs and children. 
It only made her incapable of returning the favor so she took her frustrations and anger out on Zeus's children both demigods and godly. Despite her unable to harm half the Olympian court, who were Zeus' children from various goddesses and mortals, she did not hide her distaste. She made the lives of Zeus's demigod children as miserable as possible with Hercules being the most famous ones. Her look of distaste at Artemis and Apollo not having missed them at all were ignored as they knew their existence went against Hera very domain. Hera hated demigods in general as she saw them mostly as abominations due to either broken oaths or cheating. Zeus sat up and was about to congratulate Artemis and Apollo on their return when Athena coughed making everyone look at her. Father we are still missing Dionysus. Athena informed Zeus with some distaste. Zeus growled at the slight of an Olympian not arriving at a meeting before him. In his mind it signified they could be late while he could not so he summoned his master bolt and down a camp half-blood a thunderstorm quickly boomed in warning. A few seconds later Dionysus teleported in bowing to his father and trying to ignore his glare as he sat down on his throne. Dionysus is the great god of grape harvest, wine, madness, parties, religious ecstasy, and theater. He was the last Olympian in the Olympian Council after his aunt Hestia gave up her throne to avoid a civil war. He was an unhappy god of wine being forbidden to drink his preferred drink after chasing a nymph his father had declared off limits. His mood further decreased when his father punished again by being the camp director of Camp Haplug for another offense. His mood soured after a few decades being forced to babysit ungrateful hero brats much to the disgust of most of the Olympians who were forbidden to interact with their own demigod children. Let us welcome back Artemis and Apollo who have returned from the other dimension, Zeus said loudly as everyone clapped with various enthusiasm. Much to his surprise his two children did not seem particularly pleased at the intro. He asked in fatherly voice my children what is the matter? Apollo and Artemis knew Zeus's fatherly tone would soon change so Apollo bowed his head and said respectfully father I have news. I bring a child of mine from that world here. Zeus laughed feeling some pride at his son for producing another child. Well that is nothing new, Athena said with a smirk referring to Apollo many demigod children. She was not surprised to see an annoyed look from Apollo but everyone was when Artemis gave her a warning glare. Way to go bro, another fine conquest. Hermes said clapping his brother on the shoulder as Artemis had a perfectly blank expression while Apollo looked physically restraining himself. Great another bread I will have to watch over. Dionysus said with a yawn that he drank another Diet Coke. It was well known he had no love for heroes ever since Theseus abandoned Atrian on an island who would late become his immortal wife. Just drop that bread in an orphanage so we can leave and go back to our routines. Hera sneered at her husband's son who glared back at her. Zeus sighed but secretly agreed with his wife that it would not be proper for Apollo to raise his own child. After several minutes of non-stop chatter and arguments Artemis had enough. She stood up ignoring the warning stare from Apollo and said with pride I am the mother of our child. These simple six words made every Olympian get shaken to their core. Not only had the most man-hating goddess who vowed to be chased forever seemingly broken her oath. She had broken it with her own twin brother. Now gods did not have DNA so incest was impossible for children to inherit but the godly twins were the closest thing to actual siblings for the Olympian gods. While everyone was shocked the most pressing reaction was Zeus's so everyone turned to the raging god of lightning who was sending off lighting around his body, Apollo. You slept with Artemis despite her oath? Zeus screamed ready to blast Apollo with his master bolt no matter what he had to say but to his and the council shock Artemis teleported in between her brother and father with a defiant look. Father I have not forsaken my vow and Apollo has not taken advantage of me. Artemis said in a calm voice as her eyes shine dangerously. Explain yourselves then. Zeus growled as he sat down but hand on to his master bolt in case. Yes, sister could you please explain how you could be the mother of Apollo children without forsaking your vow to be chaste? Athena asked curiously as the gods turned back to Artemis for an explanation. Says the goddess who has children through a meeting of the mind. Poseidon snickered as Hermes laughed but both climbed up when Athena and Zeus sent a glare their way. When we got to that world, we retained some parts of our memories but our powers were sealed and we become mortals. Artemis started as she sent a nod to Apollo to continue. I became a mortal called Minata Namikes and Artemis became a woman called Kashina Uzumaki and while well, they fell in love. Apollo explained ignoring the gasps in his use of his sister name. 
He also ignored the voice inside claiming not just him referring to his mortal self's feelings. Kashina was a Jinchuriki human vessel for the QB1 of the Nine-Tailed Beasts. Apollo said with some regret as Artemis kept a steely look on her face. By tailed beasts you mean those pieces of the ten tails who is rumored to as strong as a primordial in our world correct? Athena asked sharply as the gods shifted uncomfortably if beings in another world that revolved them or possibly surpassed them. Zeus was particularly nervous paranoid of that possibility. Yes, Artemis answered with a sigh. To make a long story short when Kashina gave birth the power holding back the QB was released allowing it rampage in our home in the other world. To save that home and keep the peace we decided to seal the QB into another being to keep it tame our child or more specifically our son Naruto Uzumaki. Artemis said with pride as Apollo sent her a warning look. Son? The entire room shouted at once at the news. When they heard that Artemis in another body had a child, they all expected a daughter due to her well-known hatred of males. To hear she decided to keep her mortal son alive and bring him to this world was unbelievable. The room got quiet when they heard crying and whimpering from Apollo throne. It appeared that all the shouting and yelling had finally reawakened the scared baby boy from his sleep. Instantly Apollo reached into the baby carrier and pulled the crying boy into his arms. The baby quieted down but still looked scared at all the giant beings looking at him in disbelief. Naruto managed to turn his head till he recognized his mother and reached for her with his tiny arms. The god stayed quiet expecting Artemis to reject a child who was clearly a boy but much to their shock the stern expression on her face had turned into a warm motherly expression. Naruto sorry for yelling. Come here my baby. Artemis said sweetly to the baby as she lifted him out his father arms into her own. She quickly rocked him which made him stop crying and quickly looked at her with all the innocence in the world. Ah, uh, Apollo please continue the story. Artemis seems distracted. Zeus said with a stutter at the sight of his man-hating daughter being a true mother to her baby male child. Yes father, Apollo said with a bow before he continued. After sealing away the QB into Naruto our mortal selves died and our godly selves were released. Believe me when I said neither of us realized each other's true identity but we were still overjoyed at the sight of child so we chose to bring him here and present him in front of Olympus. Apollo finished with pride. The gods did not know what to say at this point but here made her feelings known very quickly. So, what is that spawn? A mortal, a god or a demigod? Hera asked with a notable sneer as Artemis and Apollo glared heatedly at their son being implied to be a bastard. Lady Hera. Apollo said a sneer our son was born when our mortal selves were married so he is hardly spawn. Apollo announced getting a shocked expression from Hera as children outside of marriage was against her domains. Hera became speechless and a bit surprised as this new development made the child in her eyes more worthy than almost all demigods. Artemis, Apollo please answer the question on what species your son is. Zeus said in a polite but impatient tone of voice. Sigh he is mortal father as he was born from our mortal selves but he does have chakra so he can easily have powers revealing demigods. Apollo said reluctantly due to a look from Artemis telling him to tell the truth. Now what to do with this child? Zeus said thoughtfully as it appeared now Naruto was neither the child of prophecy or due to a broken oath so he was a wild card at best right now. He saw Apollo and Artemis giving him pleading looks, Poseidon gave him a wearing look as he never liked killing kids if he could avoid it. Dionysus clearly did not care, Demeter looked neutral, Hermes looked at the new parents before giving him a look to let them raise their kid. Aphrodite looked thoughtful likely thinking of a love life to give the child if he so lived. Hera gave the child a look of almost motherly affection which disappeared when she caught him glaring. Ares had a look like he had an idea, Athena looked thoughtful as if calculating the pros and cons of the child, and Hephaestus clearly looked uncomfortable at the idea of killing the child which so smoothed made sense due to his childhood. Kill the brat, Ares said with a grin as he smirked at the outraged expression of Artemis and Apollo faces. Think about it father. This kid has the power to rival one of us if he masters the power of the QB and if we kill the kid now before anyone found out Moon Virgin had a kid no one will ever doubt her chastity again. Ares claimed feeling pride when his father looked thoughtful at the idea. Aphrodite frowned at her boyfriend as she couldn't plan to the love life of Artemis' first child if he was dead. Hephaestus glared at his brother and looked ready to argue for the child's life. Demeter looked uninterested along with Dionysus. Hermes looking at his brother devastated looked stood up and stood by Apollo. Poseidon summoned his trident and gripped it. 
Before anyone could speak more or do any actions a hot burst of fire shot up in front of Artemis, Apollo and Hermes but they only felt comfort from their side of the wall. There will be enough of this talk. A woman's voice shouted as everyone turned around to see Hestia walk up in human form but with an intimating look on her normally warm eyes. Hestia is the Greek virgin goddess of the hearth, home, the right ordering of domesticity, and family. She was the eldest Olympian being the firstborn of the titans Kronos and Rhea. Despite her peaceful nature or perhaps because of it, it was an unspoken rule never to fight while in her presence was her being considered the true peace of Olympus. Her power according to herself was not as great as her siblings but was rarely shown due to her peaceful and pacifistic nature. Sister. Welcome but we have rarely seen you during our meeting so we have you come. Zeus bellowed as if flames went down to only Estia had but her standing in front of her niece and nephew still sent a message. Brother I am always he here in the heart but rarely involve myself with matters. However, I could no longer stand by while you debated killing an innocent baby for crimes. He has to commit it. Hestia said harshly as Artemis and Apollo gave sighs of relief. Sister you would have me do nothing while a potential threat sits in front of my eyes? Zeus asked with a frown tied to ignore the glare sent by his daughter. The other Olympians stayed quiet in this vocal match between two elder gods. Brother do you know that is what Kronos thought when he first saw me? Hestia said with sadness as all the Olympians looked on having heard or experienced the elder gods time with Kronos. When I was first brought into this world, I saw his eyes full of love but when he saw me it changed to fear. Despite mother attempts he swallowed me to try to avoid a future problem. Hestia said with sigh as Zeus looked down. Do you wish to continue the cycle with your grandchild? Killing him just because you think he might be a problem in the future? She asked seriously. Zeus looked seriously at the thought of turning into his father by doing the same thing to his grandchild. Father he could be an asset. Athena said trying to convince her father to spare the child. He is not a demigod but his unique nature from their world could mean he could unlock traits from Apollo and Artemis the first of his kind in the future. Athena told him as he looked thoughtful. Father think about it. Ares argued feeling keeping the child alive would be more effort than it was worth. Artemis, Apollo how do you propose you keep this child from turning on us? With the tailed beast inside of him he could someday rival our powers? Zeus said gravely after a moment. The gods out there breathe and prepare to intervene if needed based on Zeus's reaction. I will raise him to be the best man ever and with our love of guiding him he will never fall into temptation. Artemis promised as she gazed down at her son. Apollo bowed and swore he would do everything to keep the child on the right path. After a few tense moments Zeus had come to a decision. Very well I shall spare the child. Zeus declared as he sent a glare at the infuriated Ares. Artemis and Apollo sent a sigh of relief. You both shall have till his 13th birthday to raise him well but by then he must go to Camp Half-Blood and reside there at least in the summer. He shall be both your responsibilities so if he falters in his path it will be both of you who shall be punished. All here shall swear on the river Styx not to reveal the existence of this child till he is claimed by his parents. Zeus decreed as the Olympians nodded at the arrangement. Zeus was the first one to get up but said with a gentle tone use this time wisely. I usually would not give such leeway not even to my own show me I made the correct choice. Zeus said as he smiled to his happy children before he teleported away. He merely looked at a child before nodding stiffly. I shall not make his life harder as he does not offend my domains but do not expect help if he is in trouble. Hera warned the twins as she disappeared. Artemis and Apollo expected as much. Poseidon sent a grin at his nephew and niece as they walked over Zeus didn't choose that decision simply because he was kind you know? He told them with a frown. Father seemed strange at the last part. Apollo noted as Artemis nodded. You were gone for a while but Zeus broke his oath and fathered a girl called Thalia Grace. She is about four right now. Poseidon explained to the shocked twins. Things are going to get messy huh? Apollo mused as a child of the prophecy had be born. Take care of your child and do not worry about the water. I do not take a tack child in my domain for their parents' quarries. Poseidon said it with a smile. Apollo grinned always liking his uncle while Artemis nodded acknowledging her reasonable uncle. He teleported back to Atlantis. Dionysus had already teleported after the meeting ended. Demeter told them to feed him with lots of grains. Hermes offered to take their son on the bachelor's life only to dodge a throwing knife from a furious Artemis. 
Aphrodite offered him a unique love life which Artemis scoffed at. Ares glared at the twins and promised that in the future their child would not be coddled so much. Athena told them to raise him well and she was looking forward to what he would do in the future. Hephaestus grumbled that the kids seemed to have a lot of love in his life already. Leslie when all the Olympians left it was just the winds, Naruto and Hestia. Naruto saw Hestia and tilted his head making her smile at his cuteness. She asked if she could hold him and after some talking, they agreed with Naruto initially refusing to leave his mother's arms. After Hestia rubbed his cheek softly, he let go and snuggled into his warm and making her smile. The happy parents decided to name Hestia Naruto's official godmother who agreed and told them she would look out for Naruto while he was a camp half-blood away from them. After getting back Naruto who seemed sad to see Hestia leaving they teleported together to Artemis Hunter's camp to explain it to Naruto's sisters. I hope you all like the video. And if you all want the next part of this video please like the video and comment 3 hearts. Please subscribe to my channel so whenever I upload a video you will notify.